Someone here from winstrength.com bringing you the second week training overview of the hybrid barbell medicine strength template. Uh, again, if you haven't watched week one, check it out here. I explain a little bit more about the new uh, video format as well as the new style of programming I'm doing, which is a self-modified version of the strength legacy template by barbell medicine. Um, so there won't be really a review overview. This is kind of my training thoughts along the way to kind of give you some insight into how I go about thinking about training as well as uh, give you keep you up to date with my training progress so far. So start somewhat start of the new year sees the end of the old training program and a couple of weeks off and then the start of the new training uh, cycle. What I've been wanting to do is uh, week one saw me kind of figuring out what movements work well, what supersets together uh, well and what really doesn't uh, kind of suiting my own taste preferences, weaknesses and strengths. And again, that's something you should look at with your own programming. Um, yes, definitely do the templates as they get prescribed because generally the person you're buying the template off knows more than you or at least knows something different than you and you should definitely try that template out as written in order to see the results that are intended from the program. Uh, after you've run it a couple of times, this will be the third time running the strength template, you can start adding some additions, start looking at what works, what didn't, see how you can modify things, address your own weak points, uh, and go through that way to kind of tailor it to your own specific needs is what I'm doing uh, with this run through of the program. Uh, with that in mind, a couple of things that I did want to add into this program is a bit more uh, strongman specific movements, as well as uh, keep that uh, conditioning aspect in it without having to add in extra time or days to the session. So what that means is I'll be throwing in some supersets, uh, throwing in supersets with strongman style movements uh, until I start getting some more strongman implements, as well as <clears throat> uh, throwing in those back days, conditioning days, things of that nature into the same workout program, kind of condensing down the workout structure, much like uh, the Dark Horse training program did, where we put in more work in a similar or short amount of time, just because it did have that uh, 90 minute time limit, as well as the four day a week scheduling limit. So with those two constraints in mind, I'm really trying to bring in the workout time frame while still trying to elicit some gains in the one rep max. So I wanna, I'm curious to see how these uh, changes are able to affect the outcomes of the program, considering I am going off the <laughs> off template and kind of experimenting to see how much work is too much work. And if that will negatively, how I guess that will negatively affect my one rep max increases in strength. Just because I have run this in the past, I know that it does uh, work for bringing up that one rep max strength uh, quite significantly. I think like 10, 10 pounds a lift, something along those lines. So pretty significant at this stage of the game. So I'm curious to see if these additions to the program, because generally when we modify a program for my own purposes, as, at least this way specifically, I am adding more. I'm not really changing anything rather than I'm putting more stuff to do on top of the top of the cake as it were. So I'm just piling on more stuff and we'll see if piling on more stuff uh, causes burnout or if it causes me to drive up some rep max strength as well as keep those conditioning uh, skills that I developed in the old Dark Horse program. So like last week, what I'll do is I'll switch over to some voice service. So we can actually get some live feedback over how I'm training over the course of the week. So week two starts to introduce some heavy singles. So here is the top heavy single uh, at RPE 8 with the SS Joke barbell. Again, continuing with that SS Joke to save the shoulders for the amount of squatting and bench pressing I'll be doing this training cycle. Um, so after we do that heavy single for the day, we back off a couple of percentage points and then rep it out with some uh, sets there in order to get some more volume and hypertrophy. The one thing that I've noticed with the SS Joke bar is uh, there's a tendency for me to not hit depth a lot of the times uh, just because of that balance so it is something I'm working on uh, you can see here it does start to hit depth towards the end of the the set here <coughs> and it does help me to obviously ingrain that movement pattern by doing those reps as well as build up some more of that muscle hypertrophy since just doing one heavy single once a day is probably not going to be that beneficial. You need to drive both intensity and volume in order to get those gains 
uh, because strength comes from both neural adaptations as well as hypertrophy in the muscle. Um, so here we go. We're continuing on with this giant superset. Uh, move on to some ab work with the kneeling ab wheel rollouts. Uh, this is a movement I actually really enjoy. Uh, I've tried to do a standing ab wheel rollout and that doesn't turn out too well. I just fall flat on the floor. So obviously I have some work to do there with my core. And this is one of the big things that I have uh, changed my mind on in recent years is the inclusion of direct ab work. I think it's actually really necessary and I think it's really beneficial uh, because for the most part, once you hit a certain level, I don't think your core is getting as uh, stimulated as it should with your compound movements. Uh, just because you're going to hit a rate limiting factor there where you, your, your core could do more rather than what your legs can handle. And if you can do more with the core, as it were, you're better off doing that because no one ever complained about having a core that was too strong for them. And here we have the second part of day one, which is overhead presses. Again, top heavy single, RPE 8. Uh, this is within I believe 10 pounds of my current one rep max so the overhead I think that was 20 pounds of my one rep max actually so the form is getting there uh, I'm feeling more confident under the barbell for the overhead press I'm hoping these numbers drive up over the course of the program really working on keeping that head and the weight aligned uh, one thing I can recommend is to try to use it with some uh, lifting shoes just because it does allow you to bend back a little bit more than you can just because you have that uh, angle in the heel, that heightened heel so that you can uh, get a bit more leverages that way and stay a little bit more balanced with the overhead press and the weight pulling you forward and able to lead back in order to offset that weight. <coughs> and here we are just changing some weights. Again, I kind of use the in-between exercises there to take a little bit of a breather and adjust the plate so we can do that. And then here we just move on to some uh, Pendley rows, which was just supersetted with overhead press. Uh, these were for sets of 10. I believe we hit the top set was 205 pounds. Uh, one thing you notice I'm using two five pound plates, just running out of plates there. And again, with the Pendley row or any other barbell row variant, I'm not too concerned with the, uh, the strict form or using a lot of body English and momentum just because we're not doing this to isolate the lats as it were, we're kind of doing this to stimulate overall muscle growth and uh, make the body adapt. So move on to day two, which is bench, pre uh, bench pressing and deadlift. So here we have our top deadlift for the day. I've been working on my deadlift setup where there is, I'm trying to do less time bent over. So we kind of main create that tightness at the top, get our big inhale breath, flex the lats, try to make those armpits reach the back pockets, create that tension and really just bend over and uh, pick the bar up so that there's a less time spent bent over uh, just because I do want to get that full breath at the top, create that tension and also give yourself less time to think at the bottom. I think the more aggressive and the, the quicker you can pull that barbell up off the floor is just mentally you're able to pick up a little bit more weight because you're not doubting yourself thoughts that you know overthinking the movement as it were and we just move straight on to some uh, bench pressing for the day I've modified my bench press bench press grip to a little bit more of a medium style grip I'm still using the arch the leg drive uh, trying to drive those traps into the pad but I've noticed for me personally just because of my shoulder issues when I bring that grip in just a fraction so it's a thumb width away from the where the knurling starts on the barbell I noticed that that is really able to help mitigate any shoulder issues that I have had in the past and I don't really notice any pain at all with this just because of the the wider the grip the more torque that's being placed on my shoulder joint and here we have the volume work for the day again uh, supersetting the deadlift and the bench press just because it is a, it's convenient for my equipment needs. Uh, if I could on day one, I would superset the squat and the overhead press, but just because of equipment constraints, kind of that's how it is. And again, the personally for the deadlift, when I rep it out, I like to stop on the bottom and reset. I don't like to bounce them off the floor just because we are wanting to train that dead lift. So we have to start from a dead stop, uh, hence the name. And again, concentrating on driving that form up. 
Uh, during the warm-ups, I like to keep that double overhand grip, uh, but during the reps, if I can't hold onto that barbell with a double overhand grip, I'll just have to switch to that alternate grip, uh, just because I have been focusing on using uh, on bringing up my grip strength. I'm trying to rely less on lifting straps. Uh, really only when we do that overloading deadlift work there, such as like rack pulls or block pulls, where we're getting really heavy and I want to keep those shoulders in a symmetrical position there. <clears throat> and here we have for day two, the second part of the workout, which is some 303 tempo squats. These are fun in the worst way possible. The most, the harder part for this rather than the slow descent is the slow ascent because I'm so used to firing up really quickly on some squats, um, especially towards that top there where you just naturally want to kick up and stand up as quickly as possible. And obviously these are very short of a three second tempo, probably a three count where it's one, 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 uh, just because I find it easier to do one, one, one rather than the one, two, three, one, two, three, um, just a mental thing, a little trick there. I, I'll personally lose count if I'm constantly saying one, two, three. So I'll do one, 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 two, 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 three, three, three. I find that a little easy to track the reps that way, especially when you get up to 10 reps. And again, the main point of this is to work, focus on that technique. Uh, I'm paying attention to where my weight distribution is on my feet. Uh, I have a tendency to drift forward to my toes sometimes. So when that happens, I'll reset for the next rep and remember to be more cogniz cognizant and stay on my heels as well as to keep those knees forward in order to maintain that leg activation. And here we go. We're starting off with day three. Day three and four is more of a supplemental and accessory lifting day. Here we have some beltless squats. Uh, again, you'll notice here with the accessory squatting or the supplemental squatting movements, I'll use the regular barbell. Uh, for the heavier squatting movements for the week, I'll use that SS yoke barbell. Uh, and I think that's been a good balance between keeping main keeping form and maintaining technique with the regular barbell as well as driving up the strength gains with the SS yoke barbell. And again, the beltless squat is a great variant and a great accessory member because it is so specific. Uh, again, not using a belt and using a belt isn't really about core and ab activation, just because there are some studies out there that show that the, the muscle activation between the two is very minimal. So it's really just to decrease the amount of weight you can use so that you can still simulate the muscle without having to drive up fatigue. It's all about stress management and uh, stress mitigation here. Then we just move on straight up to some fat uh, pull-ups. I've noticed I've just like throwing those in whenever I can't think of a movement to throw in there just to get some more uh, back stimulation. We move on to the second part of the workout, which is some slingshot bench press. This is a great bench press accessory movement where you're overloading the weight, obviously. So here we're actually doing uh, four reps of 315 and 315 is my current one rep bench press max for a single. So you'll notice that that slingshot does add a lot of um, help to the movement. Uh, it, it was sold originally as a shoulder saver to help you with shoulder pain. Um, I haven't noticed that it's helped me too much just because I haven't had shoulder issues bothering me that, that stem from the bench press. It stems from the squat for me. So this is a great assistance movement in order to overload some weight and really get that body used to holding a uh, heavier weight towards lockout. Um, we're kind of shortening that range of motion that the body has to drive maximally. Um, so we're able to get the body accustomed to holding 315 pounds at the top. Uh, we move on to now the next set, which is some sandbag overhead pressing. Uh, I think this is a great movement. I've just recently plugged those in. I used to just do sandbag over the shoulders. I'm really liking the sandbag overhead press just because it is playing around with weight distribution. Uh, you notice obviously you'll have to lean back a lot more because that bag isn't nicely shaped like a barbell. You can't really get in the middle of it. You're kind of having to hold around it. So this is just a 100 pound bag, uh, but the 100 pound bag does feel awkward and takes some getting used to to press that overhead and where you put your hands and how you grip it. So it's kind of working a lot um, just because we can't add any more weight. We're just kind of playing around with the reps and the rest periods here. So we're doing these for sets of eight in order to drive some more uh, stability in the core as well as just get some more stimulation in the shoulder and that overhead pressing movement with a really relatively lighter weight but a much more unbalanced and unstable and odd implement to use uh, again you can use like 
a strongman log if you have access to that that's something that i would love to get in the future would be a nice alternative to this because that way you can just load it or atlas stones uh, the great thing with a sandbag for the home gym is that as you can see here you can just drop it on the floor without having to worry about cracking anything uh, this is the get rx sandbag I got this for free out of a competition, so I haven't been too uh, careful with it just because I haven't had to pay money for it. So I've been putting it through its paces. You can see how I'm kind of just dropping it from overhead and there's really no... <coughs> there's really no signs of wear and tear. The stitching is holding up just fine. And I've thrown it over my back. I haven't really, again, treated it nicely i just wanted to see if there is any breaking points to it and i've had it for over a year now with nothing really bad happening to it. you understand a really good thing with a sandbag is you can kind of drop it behind you it'll hit you and it won't hurt because it's just a bag full of sand and then we move on to our final movement for the day uh, which is some t-bar rows i've kind of just liked this as a movement just because it brings me back to the old uh, bodybuilding days there it's a nice overloading movement for the back you keep that grip close and you're really able to overload the lats just because um, you're shortening that range of motion just by design of the exercises and i've also got some landmine attachments there that's also a great bicep movement and obviously all of this is beltless so we're working on uh, just driving some more stimulation into the lower back and here we have the final day uh, day four which we're working on some block balls uh, this is the highest I've ever set the blocks just below the kneecap so we're really able to drive some weight up uh, here's a top set at 515 for four reps uh, Again, this is obviously way overloaded my current one rep max, which is 495 pounds. Um, again, training the body to lift this heavy weight, just getting it accustomed to lifting this type of weight, even if it is a shorter range of motion. You notice here that there's like a funny point where I need to get tension there. It lifts off the pads like a little bit, and then the body figures out that it needs to be a lot more tense than it actually is. So there's like a a slight pause where my body realizes what it needs to do um, I think that just becomes down to lack of practice with the movement and it's also teaching the body how to maintain tightness at the top of the lift there but for the most part uh, I have been curious to see how this overloading deadlift movement helps because I haven't really done a lot of overloading deadlift accessory movements I've mainly tried to stick with movements that drive up stress without driving up intensity like a deficit deadlift or a pause deadlift where the weights drop down a lot uh, but the difficulty of the movement is still there uh, that way you're able to mitigate stress that way but here we're kind of overloading the body uh, with heavier weights than we can normally handle so super maximal weights um, and it's not, not something I've done in the past so hopefully that will transfer through to an increased obviously increased one rep deadlift max Maybe it will, uh, but it's something I'm curious to see how it works with. Uh, we paired this up with some Zercher squats. Never done these before. Uh, <laughs> not a big fan. I don't think anybody really is a fan of Zercher squats. These may or may not be reoccurring in the future. I'm yet to decide. Just because the weight is so light that I have to use, we only have 95 pounds here. I'm doing it for sets of 10, but. I don't know if this is going to transfer well to any of the other lifts, but it might be a good strongman style movement where we're just practicing for that loaded carry in a squat format. I've had to put some knee sleeves over my arms just to stop that digging in. I, I think normally you would use this with an axle barbell, so the diameter of the barbell is a little bit bigger and you won't have uh, that thin of a barbell digging in on the inner bicep set which kind of hurts a fair bit but it's also the first time I've ever done it so that just might be uh, a reason for my body to adapt to that style of lift much like your body kind of gets used to having a heavy barbell on your back so that just might be something I have to continue in the future and just deal with the pain right now and then we move on to there's some ab movements for the day just some leg lifts nothing fancy uh, I, I've been liking the hanging movements for the ab variety just because it does double as a grip exercise and then put that on the fat bar 
again you're just adding some more grip stimulation to the entire movement something that i do need to work on and here we move on to our second part of the day our last half of the fourth day is some close grip incline bench press uh, just here wrapping it out with 225 nothing crazy but four sets of four and then we go on from there into some Romanian deadlifts again a very deadlift intensive workout here you notice obviously a lot of the movements are focused around the big four compound movements really with a big shift towards the big three compound movements I am enjoying the incline bench press the Romanian deadlift um, it probably could do some work I think it's relatively light compared to what I'm capable of with the, the regular conventional deadlift just because we are shortening that range of motion and we do have uh, that stretch reflex cycle available to us towards the bottom of that it's not really a deadlift anymore uh, but it is training that lower back tightness and getting some more stimulation in the hamstrings and we're wrapping up with some dumbbell ab twists now something that I've neglected is some rotational core slash ab movements. So this is a great variant, I think. Um, just using a 20 pound dumbbell, again with the ab movements, not wanting to test the abs, just wanting to build them up using sub-maximal intensities and sub-maximal weights. So not really trying to drive up that too far. So again, a little bit more uh, experimenting with the movements. I think I'm tailoring it down to actually some good movements that I think pair well together. Um, with Regarding to the stress-wise, I think I am able to limit the stress outtakes for the joints anyway. So my shoulders, learning from week one where my shoulders kind of didn't agree with too many movements in the same day. Uh, this time I toned back some of the movements and kind of spread them out across the week. That way we're still able to hit those movements without having to do them all in the same day, which is an, another way to mitigate stress rather than trying to do everything at once. We're kind of splitting it across the segment of the week. And again, you notice a lot of the movements that I'm doing are mainly back and strongman focused workouts. I'm not trying to add in more squat, bench, deadlift, overhead press movements. I'm trying to add in more strongman and back focused workouts as well as throwing those ab movements. Uh, the one thing I did take away from the Dark Horse program was that you can kind of throw in ab movements as long as you don't go uh, to your limit. Like as long as you don't go to like RPE 11. If you keep it within like an RPE 7 even to 8. I like to go like RPE six to eight. Uh, with that in mind, it's kind of, we're kind of dosing, we're kind of micro dosing abs over the course of the entire week, uh, multiple times a day. This way you can kind of continually build up the ab movements without having to go all the way because those compound movements rely heavily on the core. So you don't want to really uh, push the, the, the ab, the direct ab movement isn't really a focus of the workout. It should just be like an assistance to the main lift. So if the fact, if I'm trying to do Right now I can do like a one minute plank. Um, if I try and push that to say two minutes, is that going to negatively affect my squat for the day? Or is that going to negatively affect my overhead press or deadlift for the day? And if it does, then yes, my abs might've gotten stronger or more training stimulus, but my deadlift suffered because of that ab stimulus. And because my focus is on the, the four main lifts, I don't want to really detract too much from that in regards to like specific ab training. Uh, and that kind of goes to all the movements there, just because the ab is obviously at the core of every movement. Um, by not pushing it to the absolute limit of what you're capable of. So if I can do minute, minute plank, I'm looking at doing like 30 second plank, even 45 second plank. And then maybe on the last set where it's wrapping up the entire giant set where I don't have to do anything after that. I'll push that out to a limit, maybe a minute 15. So we wanna save that till the end of the workout where the main movement is done and then we can focus a little bit extra on the accessory assistance movements just because that allows us to still focus on that main lift for the day and drive those numbers up and bring that strength and stimulus up while still getting a little bit of adaptation along the core along the, along the course of the entire week. So that being said, I think second week really dialing in those assistance movements. I think I'm getting a better idea of what is agreeing with me. Uh, I don't think the stress and the accumulated fatigue is setting in too much. I'm still looking forward to training. Um, none of the joints are aching. Uh, I'm not feeling too fatigued. The weights went up from last week. We did throw, start throwing in some heavy singles, so that's cool. Um, we'll see what happens with third week where we are able to back those heavy singles up with another week of heavy singles, and we'll see if that weight is progressing forward. If it's stagnating, I might have to address 
the assistance movements or the workload. And if it's decreasing, then we're gonna to have to really address something with the way the program is looking. Uh, so that's kind of the way to judge a program with your own additions generally. Obviously, the more additions you add, the more work you're doing. So you're gonna to have to be more on point with things like sleep and nutrition and lifestyle outside of the gym, just because all of that affects your training in the gym. This is only, for me, it's only 90 minutes a day, four days a week. So it's that like eight, like six hours over the course of an entire week. That is a small percentage of my actual week, but we're hoping that that small percentage really throws in a lot of extra benefits outside of those six hours. Uh, with that being said, the six hours you spend in the gym should really be focused, really be concentrated, really put your effort in, but that requires you to be still focused outside of the gym. Um, and that's something I'll be addressing in my future videos about time management and cutting out junk. Uh, and hopefully that'll help you swing into these habits because the, the more you focus on performance in the gym, you start shifting that mindset of yours into how do I address my life to help me get better at the gym and training. But by getting better at training into the gym, you're addressing other factors in life. So everything is kind of improving. It's this virtual cycle. And I'll explain that in another video. So hopefully this new format is working out for you guys. Let me know if there's anything you would like me to address in the comments below. Any questions you might have, I'll be able to make some videos out of that. Uh, thanks again for watching. This has been Selwyn from Win Strength, And remember, a better life through strength.